Yeah, just one more little part to do before we finish this OOP question. It's been quite a long question. As you remember, the first two parts of the second part, 2.2.1, um, it was a 16-point question, and then this one that we did was quite a long one. That was a 20-mark question, so it is quite extensive. Luckily, the last one is only 12 marks, so hopefully it should be a lot less coding and should be quite easy. Okay, so print paper report. We just want to print basically the user selects this option. There's no input that's needed. All it does is go through the array and determines how many of each of the various size prints to print. So basically, it's you looking at the quantity of each order. So it's counting how many standard photos were printed, how many jumbo, and so on. So we're probably going to have some sort of count for all of them. So just be aware of that. So we go to our code. It'll be on that, the print paper report for all orders. So straight away, I'm going to create my count. So there's probably going to be four counts. So the count for the S, for the standard. There's going to be count for the jumbo. I'm going to have a count for the A5s and a count for the A4s. I'll just leave it like that. Those are going to be type integers. Also, we're going to have to go through the array. So I'm going to need some sort of looping variable. Okay, it's probably a good idea to initialize these variables. Obviously, we're going to start off with them all equaling 0. And I'm just going to do this because it's easy coding. So those I'm initializing each of these to 0. So we can start the count. Now I need to go through my array. Even if you don't understand the question, if you do the basics like this, you should be able to get some points at least. Um, so there's going to be quite a few things we're going to be needing to do. So I'm just going to end off for loop just so that I'm aware of that. Okay, so the first part will obviously be you go through each element and count it. So I'm going to have to do some sort of if statement or case statement. I uh, don't know, we did an if and then a case, so let's go back to if. So I'm going to check the quantity of each element in the array. So I've got my array order prints and I've got each one by R. Now to get the order size, if I remember correctly, it's some sort of character. There we go. Remember we created the pick size code? That was the one that we need now because if that one is equal to an S. We know that it, that particular line or that particular element in the array is a standard code. Then we are going to, in this case, only increase count S. Okay, But we're not just counting by one, we're counting by how many were actually in that order because there's a quantity. So it's almost like, I know it's, it looks like a count, it's actually a sum. So we're going to take whatever's in count S at the moment and we're going to add on to it whatever is in array order prints order prints and we need to get the quantity so I'm sure we got a, got pick quantity how perfect is this so if there were five orders in the first um, of standard size in the first order it'll take those five added to the zero and so on so there we go that's that part done but if it's not an S then it could be something else and it's literally the same code. I'm going to copy it. If you copy and paste code like this, okay, I know it's easy to make mistakes like that, but you can also save time. So if the order is equal to a jumbo, then we must increase the j, the count j variable. And that's going to increase by whatever the quantity is. And I can copy and paste this again. Else, if it is a 5, then we must increase the count 5. Make sure you do all of them by the quantity. And last but not least, if it is a 4, then we increase count 4. So basically, we're counting all the orders. So that's, that part should be done. That's easy. OK, so we've counted all of them. The for loop should be finished. We run the for loop to the end, and then we've counted them. Now comes to the second part, which is obviously the display. How must we display? When all photos are printed, there will be. So we're going to obviously clear the red output. We're going to clear it. And then we need to put that line there, lines dot add. And what do they want us to type? When all photos, they always want you to type long things. Uh, it's quite frustrating. All printed. There will be. There will be. And then there's a code on there. It's a good idea just to keep it exactly like they want it. 
Now, um, there's no other quick way of doing this. We're going to have to do this each line individually because they've got different wording there. So we're obviously going to display the count variable and then standard photos and so on and so on. So it's going to be very similar to, we'll do the first line, or the first line of it, lines.add. So the first thing we're adding here is we're adding the count for s. But remember, count s is some sort of integer. So we are going to have to convert it from an integer to a string. And once it's done that, we can then, after that, add a space with the rest of the text, which is standard photos and. Standard photos and. That looks right. And then we add a whole new line. Oops, what's it done there? Let's go do this line. I'm going to copy it and paste it because it's going to be very similar. Except for this time on the new line, we're going to add the jumbo line. Jumbo count and this jumbo photos and so it's very similar. We just change the J and then we put the word jumbo here. Jumbo. And then we're going to add another line. And the next one, we're going to add the A5 photos. But instead, we're going to say we, there's a special wording they've got here capital DIN A5. DIN A5. And then last but not least, we're going to add the f A4 photos which if I remember correctly will be DIN A4 and there's a full stop so there's no AND at the end so don't forget that part. I think it's that easy, I hope it's that easy, if it's not we can always just read the question make sure it's correct. Let's run it, oh there's an error here, oh forgot my semicolon. So if I run the last report it runs it, are those numbers the same numbers as what we've got over here? That's a good indicator that I am correct. So as you can see, that question was quite easy. It was the simplest of the lot. Um, it was just two parts, doing the counting all of the quantities and then displaying all the quantities. And that's where we'll get our 12 marks. Um, I hope this has been informative. As I said, the big tip that I can leave with you, remember there are two parts to an OOP question. The first part is, is creating your class and your methods that you're going to use, so your constructor and your functions. And the second part is how you use that class um, in a normal scenario. So you will probably be loading lots of data from a text file or some sort of um, data file or something like that. Please remember, you do not need to do anything to the text file in the class. The class handles one record by itself in its unique form. So the program, the main program, the second part of the question, will work with multiple versions of that class, multiple versions of that um, record, where the main program, the main class, deals with only one. Hope this has been informative, and I hope you guys can use this for your studies.